The tropical region's broad, open terrain. A grassy area with a patchwork of trees and plants. An area with drought and flooding. Of all the habitats on the planet, this one sustains the most well-known animals, dominating the continent in the middle of our solar system, where the safari is held. Here we are in the savanna. There are two habitats in the tropics of our planet that are immediately recognizable to humans. The tropical rainforest is the first of these, which we have already discussed. The tropical savanna is the other, much drier one. The savannas of the tropics, which cover huge expanses on three continents, make up for any biodiversity deficit compared to its more diverse rainforest cousin in sheer number of large mammalian fauna, eating on the never-ending grass and on the animals that consume that grass. Many of you undoubtedly envision expansive, unbroken grasslands like the Serengeti, which is frequently seen on TV in nature documentaries when you think of savanna. However, savanna is actually a mixture of trees, bushes, and grasses. Every year, in the intervals between the rainy seasons, situations of extreme drought restrict the growth of the forest, enlarging the space between trees and allowing an abundance of light to reach the ground. As a result, large grassy areas or dense shrubbery are planted to fill in the spaces. The trees here survive the dry season by losing their leaves, just like in the nearby tropical seasonal woods. Given how closely the regions resemble one another geographically, the Koppen climatic type that predominates in these areas is named after this biome, tropical savanna. We can locate savanna to the left of tropical forests on our Holdridge Life Zones map, where total rainfall is decreased and where it is either defined as thorn steppe or woodland or very dry forest. The long dry season in these regions, not the overall amount of rain, is what has the most impact on their character, therefore this chart only tells half the picture. Savannas are actually zones of transition between the lush tropical rainforests and the scorching hot subtropical deserts. Instead of abruptly beginning or ending, they gradually transition from scrubland on the drier side to tropical forests on the wetter side. The percentage of a land's canopy that qualifies it as savanna depends on the individual, but it typically ranges from 5 to 80%. It's not surprising to see brush fires in this area given how long the dry seasons are. In actuality, all plant species have developed in different ways to withstand frequent fires. Because of the impact of fire, numerous savanna regions around the world are thought to have evolved where tropical forests would have been thousands of years ago as a result of human fire activity. So where exactly is savanna located in the world? They can exist in temperate and subtropical latitudes as well as the tropics if we use the exact definition of a natural mixture of trees, shrubs, and grass. However, these regions pale in comparison to the tropical savanna that predominates in the tropics, particularly in South America, Australia, and Africa. In upcoming episodes, I'll talk a little bit more about these other topics. But for now, let's keep our attention on the tropics. The Americas, then, are divided into regions where savannas can be found in isolated patches in southern Mexico, on several Caribbean islands, particularly Cuba, and in southern Florida, where the Everglades are actually a flooded version of a savanna. Greater savanna expanses can be found in South America, including much of Venezuela's central region, although the Cerrado in central Brazil contains enormous tracts of fragmented woodland. With an estimated 800 different tree species, the Brazilian savanna is the biodiverse region on the entire planet. Going to Australia now, we find large areas of the outback there in the form of broken woodland, shrubland, and grassland that fits the definition of a savanna, which is a broad transition zone spanning across the north and east of the island continent between the coastal forests and the parched desert interior. In the region depicted on this map, species gradually change from tropical variety in the north to more temperate forms in the south. Finally, but certainly not least, we reach Africa, which for the majority of us conjures images of when we hear the name savanna. This biome predominates on this continent, spanning a broad region from Ethiopia in the northeast through West Africa. 
This band follows sharp lines of latitude, traditionally depicting the change from the enormous Sahara Desert to the south to the equatorial woods to the north. The most well-known of all savannas, the Maasai Mara of Kenya and Serengeti of Tanzania, were formed in East Africa as a result of the broad plateaus that span the equator and the resulting drier conditions. With the exception of the southwestern deserts, southern Africa is covered by these savannas south of the equator, which expand out around the southern Congo rainforests. The wet and dry seasons in these areas also extend into Madagascar, where savanna is present in a distinct form as it usually been on this island of exceptional biodiversity. Each continent has its own unique tree, shrub, and grass species. Curatella, locustberries, Marichal cimarrons, and Baudicchia are the most prevalent broadleaf trees in the Americas, although Copernia and Mauritia palms are typically found in more inundated areas. Among the more popular types of ground cover are cutgrass and bahia grass. Acacia and baobab, the two most recognizable savanna trees in the world, are widely distributed throughout Africa, with acacias predominating in the east and baobabs in the south and Madagascar. The west is where bush willows are most prevalent, while robust borises palms are widespread. Wetter savannas are home to brachystegia, while drier regions are frequently dominated by prickly shrub thickets. Blue stem, thatching, elephant, and kangaroo grasses are examples of ground covers. Unsurprisingly, eucalyptus trees predominate in the Australian savanna, thanks to a unique adaptation, they maintain the majority of their leaves throughout the dry season. Baobabs and acacias are, nevertheless, also present in northwestern regions. Large tracts of damp savanna are covered in an understory of tall spear grass and shorter kangaroo grass, whereas drier arid areas are dominated by thorny spinifex grasses. Do we dare bring up fauna? Despite the fact that this series is about flora on earth, no discussion of the savanna would be complete without mentioning its biggest claim to fame, the abundance of large animal species, particularly those that are found in Africa, the continent of the safari. Numerous herds of antelope, buffalo, zebras, wildebeest, giraffes, elephants, rhinoceroses, and giraffes have feeding grounds thanks to the existence of huge grasslands. Predators including lions, cheetahs, hyenas, and African wild dogs follow these herds. This abundance of huge animals, which cannot be found anywhere else on earth, is possibly the savanna's greatest gift. And the savanna is there. I hope you enjoyed hearing about this special biome. If you did, kindly like, share, and comment on this video with your ideas. Do not forget to subscribe to avoid missing upcoming episodes. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in your chaps for the upcoming episode, in which we'll explore the thorny scrublands.